What if Rotom Wash was in Gen 1 OU? I randomly decided, you know what? Yeah, I'm just going to do a mini-series where I take care of all of the Rotom appliances. And probably I should do regular Rotom as well. But we'll have to see. And I think it's fair to start with the, the best one historically and probably the most iconic, Rotom Wash. This guy has been pretty good for a lot of gens. He was good in Gen 9, but then he became not so good because everything in Gen 9 is poor with design. But how would he be in Gen 1? Now, for those of you who know custom games, you should know that they will always use the Pokemon from its earliest generation for mechanics and stuff. So Rotom, if you don't know this, in Gen 4, the Rotom appliances stayed Rotom's original typing. So he stayed an electric ghost type. So he's not electric water. Which, even though he has more weaknesses now, or actually no, it's still basically one weakness for all intents and purposes. So there's not much of a trade-off at all, really. In fact, it's probably a lot better, because the ghost type is insane in Gen 1, since you have the normal immunity. Normally, as a electric water type, your only weakness is grass, since you have levitate. You don't have levitate, so you do have a earthquake weakness. What else do you have? There's no dark types. The only ghost move is lick. So something tells me that you're not worried about Gengar beating you. At least not with Lick of all things. So, basically nothing. If it was weak to Grass, it would suddenly have a weakness to a always crit Razor Leaf. That doesn't sound nice. So in return, you're faster than every single ground type, basically. I I guess you're slower than Doug Trio. Well, I don't think you need to worry about Doug Trio and Gen 1 OU. Hydro Pump can always Oko right on. So the only real Earthquake users you need to worry about is Tauros. Which, even if that's literally the only main Earthquake user you have to worry about, that alone, I'd argue, is a really fair trade. And also, I guess Mew in Gen 1 Ubers. But if I'm being honest with you, I don't even know how good Rotom would be there. Probably not very good compared to Gengar, since you have to rely on only special moves instead of having stuff like Explosion or Hypnosis. But it's... it's fine. Speaking of Gengar, I, I am happy to say that the two of them don't have to compete with each other. Both of them have a lot of advantages over the other. For one, Rotom has the much better typing. Unlike Gengar, who needs to use Mega Drain, you have pretty good answers for your grand weaknesses. You're not weak to Psychic. However, even though you... Or actually, no, does Gengar have higher special? I do not remember. I want to check this out right now. I don't think it matters too much either way. Okay, yeah, Gengar... I don't know what I was thinking. Of course, Gengar has much higher special. So, Gengar is bulkier, but more importantly, it hits harder. So, against special Pokemon... Not only does Gengar have the advantage, since it's faster, it has Hypnosis, but really, really importantly, it has Explosion, which can just take KOs very quickly. Meanwhile, Rotom, he has Strong Stab. Thunderbolt and Hy Hydro Pump are really great. But it's just not as good as Gengar. And it kind of means, with most of the Psychic types, High Special and Recovery, Rotom actually struggles to deal with them, but it's not the worst thing in the world. It has really good bulk with a defense, special defense, special attack, and speed's actually really good as well. That speed makes you faster than Coyster, which you weren't really scared of Quamp either way, but it is nice knowing you can outspeed it. It's even better since you know Coyster can never explode on you. As for moveset, 90% of it is pretty straightforward. Hydro Pump, Thunderbolt, obviously that's pretty good. Thunder Wave, just being a very bulky pivot Pokemon, obviously you can do good at confuse or paralyzing it. But speaking of confusing, I don't know if that's the best move or not. I can see it being very annoying since Rotom is very 
bulky, it can survive, paralyze, and it can fuse. But some other moves it can have would be white screen, reflect, rest, and flash. For all intents and purposes, rest is probably the best move for Rotom. And as for reflect and white screen, there's just some things I don't like about them. So starting off with reflect, that sounds pretty good. Because if you do that, you're not as weak to Earthquake anymore, which means you are just basically have no weaknesses. But like I said, you outspeed most of the ground types anyways, and you can threaten all of them with Hydro Pump. And Tauros is faster than you, so even if we ignore its chance to crit, what you're most likely doing is you're using Thunder Wave, then you're going for Reflect, and at that point, Tauros already got two Earthquakes on you. So that doesn't really seem worth it. I suppose it can go for re Reflect on something else. But even if that's the case, they probably wouldn't even take out Roll or Tauros at in the first place. So Reflect in practice just seems kind of redundant. White Screen, you think, could be annoying. Since it just makes you a little bit bulkier against the Psychic types. It means they need more special drops to kill you. But no. You only have Thunderbolt and Hydro Pump as your attacks, so even if you're bulkier still, having to having having you do way less damage is just so crippling. And since you don't have recovery, you're basically not making any progress against them, because your special attacks will get weaker and weaker, and they will just recover off the damage. Why don't you just see your edge as a meme, just for a fourth move slot? I could have put Swift, but something tells me you're not going to use that with your 65 attack. So Rest is probably the best thing. But even with Rest, I don't really see Rotom getting too many opportunities to use it and like wake up. You probably could. But I just think Confuse Ray is generally just really annoying and that I feel like you can get more usage out of. Because some Pokemon like Lapras do like to use it. Gengar has better things it can be doing. But not Rotom really. Because like, as, as I just explained with the dual screens, those aren't really worth it. Rest could be worth it. But even with your insanely good defenses, you still have base 50 HP. That's really important to remember. But paralyzing something and then confusing it, that is annoying. And even for, uh bulky special attackers. Just doing that is already good. You can just do that, pivot out into something that's a lot more threatening. And they're most likely going to be forced to switch out. It's not the best thing in the world, but then again, for Generation Jump on Season 2, we would really have Minari making it to Winner's Bracket Finals with a pure uh, Paralysis Spam Confuse Ray team. So it's probably better in Gen 1 than in any other Gens. Since Paralysis gives you a 25% chance not do anything, and Confusion is literally 50%. Combine those two together, and that's probably better than most of these. But you can argue with me if you want in the comments. Or I say argue, but most of the time I'll, I'll just agree with you. <laughs> Reflect, I can see maybe being better. Rest, I can definitely see being better. I'd love to hear what you guys have to say in the comments. But for now, let's get right into the replay. Now, starting with the boy himself, Tauros. Like I said, he's faster. And once you did use Reflect there, by that point you're already at like a third HP. Doesn't really sound worth it, now does it? I think you're much better off just trying to win off Confusion and Paralysis luck. Which is decently possible. Still very risky. So Tauros is a good go either way. Well, you can still switch into his Hyper Beams or his Body Slams. And even with Earthquake, World Tom is very annoying for Tauros. So I think in most cases, you'd rather preserve your Tauros and you're forced to switch out. But if you switch out, you're probably going for Thunder Wave. And if something's already paralyzed, you can immediately go for Confuse Ray. So nothing really wants to switch into Rotom. At least not at the beginning. Snarlax, unlike Tauros, has a lot more bulk, so ironically, it can survive a lot longer and get more opportunities to hit Earthquake. 
And since it has more attack, unlike Tauros, it always gets a 2-bit KO. Which, as you can imagine, is huge. I suppose Starax would be, like, the one example where you can use Reflect on Rotom. But even then, you saw there, Thunderbolt wasn't really doing that much damage. And Snorlax is a much better Rust user than you are. So even in this scenario, Reflect doesn't really help you with your problem. Because you're not doing enough damage to Snorlax in time. And then Amnesia Wax. If it's using Thunderbolt only, you're probably fine. But I'm pretty sure Amnesia Wax with only Thunderbolt is even good. So most of them are going to be using Ice Beam. And since you're not a Water type this gen, this is the one case where Water Electric would have been better. But even then, it's still Gen 1. Nothing really wants to take a nice move because of that freeze chance. So Rotom can... Well, it can try to fish for Grits. It can try to fish for Paralysis. Confusion. Which is very annoying. And it means that the magic in Snorax, regardless of what set it is, is never truly unwinnable. But most Snorraxes are not going to get this unlucky. Or at the very least, even if they do, I do not think it's worth saying this is a could go either way when you're relying on Paralysis Confusion. Considering, because you saw in the other, like literally the other replay I just showed you, and that one Snorlax got pretty lucky and managed to get some Earthquakes off pretty easily. So it's very inconsistent, and most of the time, I'm moving the lean towards Snorlax. But even if Snorlax wins, the player using Snorlax will definitely be very aggravated. And I can't really blame them. And then Chansey. It's... Imagine trying to use the Paralysis Confuse Ray Luck. But now imagine the Pokemon has a crap ton of HP and incredibly well attack. Yeah, the, the strat doesn't really work, now does it? This is an unwinnable match, but I'm pretty sure I put in bad matchups. But that is definitely not the case. This is 100% unwinnable. Maybe if it had Will Wisp, or no, even then, like Burn doesn't do that much passive damage in Gen 1. By the way, as we're going on here watching his replay, I'd like to remind you guys that I'm currently at 959 subscribers. I'm trying to get to 1,000 by the end of the month, and if you can like this video and subscribe, it'd mean a lot to me. We're getting so close to having that 1k, and... I'm already decided that my next videos are going to be the other Rotom appliances. And I think the next one's going to be Rotom Heat. And for these Rotom forms, I will let you know right now. All of them have their signature moves. So Rotom Heat will have Overheat. Uh, the Lawnmower one will have Leaf Storm. You'll have Blizzard. And you'll have Air Slash. So it'll be funny. So be sure to actually uh, subscribe. Because those are going to be pretty good. Always better than the replay you're watching in front of you. Because yeah, Chansey can always do a lot of damage. I don't think there's any real Chansey sets with only Thunderbolt. So even if Ice Beam is its only attacking move, it's going to beat the Rotom 1v1 eventually. I'm not going to count a scenario where Chansey gets paralyzed and confused like 15 times in a row. Because that's like most likely never going to happen. But if it does happen, for the love of God, send me a replay. I want to laugh at that. And Alakazam, it's... You mentioned the whole thing with Chansey, but the process can be sped up a lot faster since you have a great crit rate, you can do special drops. So yeah, it's a lot better. I uh, thank goodness for that, because it, that Chansey replay was... very stally. Coyster you have a great matchup against. I don't think anyone's surprised. The only Coyster can win is if it gets a freeze. But I don't think you want to risk your Coyster for a 10% chance. Not to mention, with Rotom being ace, or ace, base 86 speed, that's a pretty good crit rate, all things considered. Executor. You can try to hack this if you want, but keep in mind Executor resists both Thunderbolt and Hydro Pump. And it's not like Swift will do a lot of damage. So you have another just truly unwinnable matchup. And keep in mind, even if Rotom had Shadow Ball, it's Gen 1. So because of the glitch, Psychic types are immune to Ghost. So it really does not matter what move you have, Rotom's always gonna just be boned. Actually though, 
Pain Split is not a signature move, right? Doesn't like Dusknor and Dusclops, don't they also have it? That's a bit of a shame. Because Rotom probably would benefit a lot from having Pain Split. I don't think he needs it. I think all of the forms are already pretty interesting on their own. But it would be interesting. And Gengar. Now, with the way I do my replays, I always do at least one Nightshade first before trying to go for Hypnosis. You're going to see a replay where Gengar just gets hacked out, and it's really sad. But this isn't going to be most of them. Most Gengars are going to go for Hypnosis at the beginning. Which Rotom can do a decent job pivoting around things. But I'd say, like, regardless, especially if there's a Sleep Clause already in effect. I'd say this matches a could go either way. Both can do like a fourth to a third. So it's just a matter of paralysis work or getting sweep, things like that. I kind of like it. Because normally ghost matchups, it's pretty... It's usually only one of the other dominates. It's rarely ever even. So you know how Jolteon is actually pretty good at walling out Zapdos? Yeah, same thing here. Even with the resistance... I would probably put my money on Jolteon winning most of the time. It's faster, its crit rate means it can hit decently hard. You have Hydro Pump for Rotom, but not only is Hydro Pump unreliable because of its accuracy, but even when it hits, as you saw there, that was only 20%. Not very good at all. So Jolteon is actually just doing more damage in practice. Or, it's, or maybe with crits, but you get crits a lot with Jolteon. Not to mention Jolteon can always just go for rest, which is what it does against Zapdos. Now, Rotom versus Jinx. Didn't bother having a replay with Wealthy Kiss, because I think y'all know how that goes with Jinx being faster. Or actually, no, like, I, I did go, I just go, didn't go for right away. But yeah, Confusion and Paralysis probably works a little bit better against Jinx rather than other Psychic types. But... Even though you can hit Jinx harder than those other ones, Jinx at the same time can hit you decently hard. Wizard is a 3 hit KO. In Psychic, yeah, you're not gonna do well if you get a special drop. So you, you can even debate Jinx just fighting you and not even using Sleep. Probably not if you do use Confuse Ray Paralysis, but something to think about. Not so much with the Rhydon matchup, I think everyone saw that coming. I don't think anyone thought Rhydon was going to win that. Although it is fair to say, if it's a paralyzed Rotom, it obviously fears Rhydon a lot more. But literally everything fears Rhydon when the entire team is paralyzed. And Slowbro. Maybe if you had Amnesia's up already, it would kind of stand up to Rotom. But for now, it's just... And one for one like this, Slowbro is just not going to do well. It's just not going to be able to get those Amnesias up in time. Rotom's crit rate is pretty good. Maybe you can get lucky with Paralysis, but I would not bet on it whatsoever. I'd probably always bet on Rotom eventually winning. Not to mention, it can just annoy Slowbro at its own game and paralyze it, and even use Confuser as an extra, you know, FU. Which is funny. Not as funny as getting a crit, though. Nice Amnesia, Slowbro. Alright, two more replays left. We got Starmie, which is probably the psychic type you have the best matchup against. Because obviously it's a uh, water type. It can paralyze you, it can fish for special drops, it can get crits. But it's not worth it. Thunderbolt does so much damage to you. Not only is you recovering off the damage very unlikely, as you see there, Thunderbolt could do more damage you can heal. So there's not really a chance of Starry winning in the first place. And last but not least, we have Zapdos. Just like Jolteon, you're perfectly capable of stalling out Zapdos. And if you're using Rest instead of Confuse Rate, it, it does even better. But another neat bonus is that... Like, both of your stabs do pretty decent damage to it. So depending on the damage range, you can just go for Hydro Pump instead. Could also help in case you think they might switch into Rhydon. Just having those mind games is just really nice. Now, here is the tier list. Yeah, it's 
pretty good. This should be moved to one unwinnable. Because good golly, I don't know how it can have even uh, the slightest chance against Chansey. But yeah, uh, oh wait no, this is also not supposed to be here, this is supposed to be bad. I'm not even sure uh, how I made that mistake, but whatever. Maybe this should go in great matchups? Yeah, like, I'm pretty, like, as you can probably tell, I'm pretty, like, indecisive. But mostly for, like, these three right here. I'm not exactly sure what really counts as a great matchup and what counts as a good matchup in this context. Because it seems like Real Time Watch kind of dominates all of them pretty well. I don't think he can dominate all of them in the same game. I think things like Zapdos and Starmie can potentially wear it down. Same with these other Pokemon. Well, overall, I'm happy with this. And I think Rotom Heat is going to be really interesting. Because even though it's going to have Overheat, I think there's a legitimate argument for you to use Fire Blast as well. We'll have to wait and see. Thank you all for watching. Be sure to subscribe. This is Groundback, and I look forward to hearing from you.